guys just uh, wanted to give you guys a quick look here at the new Atlas 5H bipod. Um, just came out from B&T Industries in uh, Kansas and it's designed specifically for big bore rifles, 338, 50 cal, 375 Shea Tech, etc. Um, this isn't really a review, this is more just kind of a, kind of a first set of impressions and I wanted to give uh, the people that just got their hands on these a couple of tips because I've seen some people struggling a little bit with the setup and uh, I'll show you what works for me. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's, uh, there's a QD mount up here on the top and that just allows you to pull it off and mount it to the rifle of your choice. Then you've got a little lock, lock lever down here on the bottom okay, and there's a tension wheel and that's uh, where you need to start paying attention. We'll get to that in a sec. Um, function wise what makes it different than the uh, traditional Atlas bipods is the center of gravity is lower because of this uh, sliding hanger here and when it's unlocked you can actually rotate the rifle left and right on that hanger so that would be how you kind of account for differences in uh, the terrain if you know you're on the side of a hill and you need to get the rifle level you can rotate everything over get it where you want it and then you can lock it down um, the legs function, you know, in the exact same way that, you know, you're used to Atlas legs working. You know, you pull down the little locking collar, and then you can expand and uh, retract the legs. They're a lot beefier than the normal Atlas. I, I like it. I think this thing's well suited to, uh, you know, a larger rifle and heavier recoil. Um, the thing to be cognizant of, I guess, is the setup. So if I have this unlocked right now, I can rotate this freely and, you know, I don't know if I was, if you're shooting at moving targets or something, you have the ability to uh, both cant the rifle side to side and pan it back and forth like this, like I'm doing right now. Now, setup on this, here's my suggestion, and, you know, everybody's probably got their own way of doing it. You do it however you want, but I suggest opening the lever, let it hang, you know, basically vertical like this start cranking this detent adjuster knob down you want to go opposite of the little arrow the arrow points in the way that makes the uh, friction lock looser so go the opposite way and keep going until you get to a point where you're you're basically struggling to cl close this lever it's getting tight and if you're at the point where you're like man i am really having to mash this to lock it you, know, you don't want to break anything back it off you know one maybe two clicks to the point where like basically you want it like uh if you're if you've ever been a uh, a mountain bike person you know you want to have about 25 percent of the levers uh motion maybe you know 45 degrees 90 degrees i'd say 45 degrees from closed where it starts getting really tight and then you got to just kind of press it home that last little bit and then it locks in and what you do with that is you're locking the friction uh mechanism up so now, pick this up, I mean, I'm torquing on this thing pretty good, and you can see it's not sliding side to side at all. Now, there's still the ability to pan back and forth, and you got to understand, you got, you know, a really heavy rifle, there's a lot of leverage on this thing, you know, get asking a little bit of friction to hold that completely still is asking a lot. Um, I'm more concerned. I use this. I, I think the lever is going to be more beneficial for your just your basic movement. Unlock it. You know, get everything tuned in. You know, there there's there's some movement. You know, both forward, back, front. You know, side to side when this is unlocked. My suggestion is if I was going to take a a shot out my window here or whatever, get it to where you're happy, okay, and line up. The, uh, the rifle where you want it, load into it like you're gonna, you know, shoulder it up and shoot, and then reach forward and lock that. Now, when you do that, you can see here the rifle's level, and even if I torque the hell out of it, it's not moving, you know, and I can still pan a little bit if I need to, but for the most part, it's not going anywhere. Now, they've even included this little tension pin here. If you want to lock this whole thing up completely, you can. You can screw this all the way in 
and it'll bind up everything and you can get it set so it basically it won't it won't uh, can't and it won't pan either so if you're just shooting on kind of the uh, traditional square range and you want everything to be really locked in that might be the way to do it you know um, f-class people stuff like that I don't know if you're gonna be uh, switching away from the traditional bipods anytime soon but if you got one of these and you want to try it just thread this thing all the way in and I'll show you there's actually a little notch built into the steel hanger that that'll slip into and tighten against and it, it, it's not going anywhere if you do that so that's kind of the initial uh, thoughts on setup for this guy you know we're gonna try and once the weather gets a little better we'll try and get it out and do a little live fire and add that to uh, the material for the review but as far as first impressions I like it it's it's beefy and it seems to work exactly the way they uh, they advertise if you're having trouble getting it set up try that you know pull this lever unlock it tighten this down until it's just barely like it's it's a it should be a chore okay think of this like a quick release scope mount you should really have to crank that thing to get it to close and once you do you're gonna see the pan the panning feature you know is tighter you don't get as much movement side to side and the cant mechanism is non-existent if you do it right that just will not allow you to rock side to side that's it for now. If you have any questions, shoot us an email or drop something in the comments.